we wanted to start this series with you as the new mayor of Edgewater to kind of get a sense of why you ran for mayor, what you love about this community, and then what your hopes and dreams are during your tenure of mayor. And this morning we're meeting in Griffin Coffee, one of the best businesses in town, I would say, one of the gathering places. Uh, when I moved to town in 2012, this was uh, Edgewater Coffee Company, which was ran by Gina Hartley, who's kind of the place to meet people. The way I describe it back then, it was more like a your grandma's living room. So it was very open, welcoming, and over the past few years, it's gone from Edgewater Coffee Company to Coda Coffee, and then now to Griffin Coffee. And so it's kind of the place to meet people, get your early morning drink before your afternoon drinks. But we wanted to kind of start in this place because it's one of those spots where you can meet people and it's key to what Edgewater's been in the past, over the past 10 years, and what Edgewater is becoming. So thanks for meeting me here in Griffin Coffee. Yeah. So what are you drinking this morning? Um, well, I am drinking a, a chai tea. Okay. Um, not, I don't have anything against coffee. My stomach does. Okay. So <laughs> I, I made the switch to tea oh, maybe four or five years ago. and. Uh, can't be tempted at all by coffee or uh, <laughs> so you don't need the caffeine at all from it you've learned to live without that um so I, the one of one of the reasons i do chai tea is it has black tea and it has okay. about half the caffeine as coffee nice. so i still get still get some caffeine in the morning uh but enough that my my body can can absorb and handle yeah yeah, yeah. that's one of those things becoming a little bit older i'm matching you with chai because i've drank too much coffee already <laughs> this morning and if I drink any more coffee, I might start to shake. So <laughs> that wouldn't be good. And that's one of the cool things about Griffin too, is that they have kind of a whole range of drinks like turmeric chai. There's even yeah. some, some things I don't know what they are on the menu, but it's kind of a very diverse drink offering. And what kind of milk did you get in yours? Um, I got oat milk in yeah. mine. Yeah, something that I've, I've been enjoying uh, oh, I guess for the last year or so. Nice. Um, uh, I really like oat milk ice cream. Yeah, um, interesting. Because to me, the flavor's pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, but you don't have, uh, again, my stomach issues. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you don't have the, the impacts that dairy would. Right. With the oat milk. So Nice. It, it's, a, it's a good alternative. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, they offer a lot of different options for folks, which is, which is really nice. So... Down to the questions about you all and your family, what drew you to move to Edgewater and how long have you lived here in town? Yeah, um, so I moved to Edgewater in 2015. Okay. I bought my first house. Um, so at the time I was, um, you know, kind of had gotten established uh, in my career and was looking to settle down. Um, and so had, had been blessed with kind of enough financial resources to look for my first home and uh, was looking for something on the west side of the metro area and just happened to, happened to find a, 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 a little house uh, on Eaton Street. Nice. Um, which really was, uh, it, it was a, a, a big deal for me. Yeah. You know, to, to be able to um, save up for several years, buy a house um, at, at a reasonable price, which didn't seem like a reasonable price at the time, but exactly. looking back seven years ago, it was, it was a, a great deal. Um, and then I went on, uh, proposed to my wife uh, a few months later, uh, got married, had kids, you know, just kind of living everything out as we had hoped. Mm -hmm. uh, after buying that house, and um, that's that's kind of the story of what what brought uh, me and my family to Edgewater. Nice. And what is it that you do for work? I'll let you take a sip. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I work at the National Renewable Energy Lab in Golden. Okay. Uh, working in their finance office. Um, basically, I I get I'm in the role to support all the brilliant researchers, make okay. sure that they're uh, their finances are in order. Nice. And uh, so that's, that's been an exciting uh, career. I've been at the lab for almost 
eight years and to see the lab grow um, almost double in size since I started. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the important work that we're doing at the lab is something to be, uh, something that's, that's been great to be a part of. Yeah. Oh. And so you've been on city council and are now mayor. How do you mm -hmm. see your role as an accountant and kind of the way your brain thinks? How do you apply that to your role as city council member before and then now your role as a mayor? Um, I think there's, there's a lot of benefits. I think, I think everybody who serves in public office draws on their professional experiences and um, we're lucky to have kind of on, on our council a good mix mm -hmm. of different professions. What, uh, what I think I bring is, is kind of a, um, there's always that accountability stand uh, and, and transparency mm -hmm. uh, ethic that I developed in accounting. Um, there's also uh, in, in my need being a little bit more analytical mm -hmm. for measurable results. Right. And I think that's really important as we try to accomplish our community goals is to not only set out plans, but execute and mm -hmm. have something to show for them. Yeah. And anybody that's watched city council meetings knows that being on council really takes a detail orientation, looking at <laughs> words and how words form sentences, the meanings behind words, and then the correlation to what actually happens on the ground. So it kind of seems like your, your detail orientation really comes into play in those roles as well. Whereas I'm not detailed at all. So I sit there and watch meetings and some things I'm like, you all have an intense amount of patience and just dealing with those little details, which is really important. Well, the, the details are important, but I think it's, it's important not to get lost in those details. and. One of the one of the things that I've challenged myself uh, in this new role as mayor is to uh, try to make the the meetings less intimidating, mm -hmm. more welcoming. Yeah. Uh, certainly, there's those underlying details, but uh, we don't want to we don't want to bore everyone out of the room. Right. Uh, we have crucial community conversations that we need to have uh, in our council chambers and. We want people to feel welcome and know that if they come to our meetings, they're going to get to have those conversations without and prioritize those conversations. We, we can handle some of the stuff later in the evening, Yeah. Uh, but give people an opportunity to, to get their say and, and hear the most important parts at the beginning of the meeting. Right. And what led you to start down the road of running for city council and then ultimately running for mayor? Well, I think um, it, it kind of goes back to that initial home purchase back in, in 2015. It was, for me, it was really a, a change in mindset mm -hmm. where I had been living in communities for the purpose of, uh, ever, ever since high school, really, uh, for the purpose of educating myself or for the, furthering my career um, or having some sort, of, some sort of adventure or experience that was temporary. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had always had the sense of, okay, well, at some point I'm going to move somewhere else. And that, yeah. that all changed when I bought my first house, wanting to settle down and be a part of something mm -hmm. um, like I had when I grew up. Um, and so that was, that was kind of my desire to, to get involved in our community. And, um, and that's one of the things I think is really special about Edgewater, where we are at 0.7 square miles, essentially a neighborhood but we have um, this city that we're all a part of mm -hmm. that kind of unites everyone and, uh, and gives us a strong sense of community in our, in our neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so that, that was definitely, um, definitely a draw uh, and something mm -hmm. that I recognized and, and was welcomed into pretty quickly after I moved here. Yeah, nice. You can feel free to drink some yeah. of your chai. Yeah. We can't let yeah, that cheers. go. <laughs> cheers. There yeah. you go. So I remember it's probably about 2000, maybe 2016, 17, a number of folks in the, the community were doing an effort around Solarize Edgewater. Mm -hmm. I think this was before the sustainability group in town had gotten going. And I yep. feel like that was the first time I met you was doing that work, or it might've been mm -hmm. some of the housing work, but there was definitely a correlation between 
your work that you do during the day and getting involved in sustainability efforts here in Edgewater, whether it was solar or sustainability, that that was something that you were passionate about. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's funny. The, I, I, I like to tell a story where I, I get on the, the 20 bus before this pandemic and we work from home for now two years straight. Yeah. But back in the day when we actually went into the office, I get on the bus and uh, start talking to folks who worked at the lab. Mm -hmm. And um, I happened to just be talking with one of my neighbors that got on a couple couple blocks after I did. And it's like, oh, you're in Edgewater too. Hey, what you know? What do you think? What do you think of how we're doing as a community? How can we make an impact on a local level? Uh, a lot of the objectives we talk about at the lab, being a national laboratory, is how does it impact? on a, a grand scale of the United States, how do we do the same thing at a local level? Yeah. Um, so having, uh, having those conversations on, on the bus and uh, led to kind of that effort with, uh, with Xerxes and, and getting, mm -hmm. uh, getting the uh, sustainable Edgewater uh, advocacy really moving in 2015, 2016, yeah. 2017. Uh, which which led to the solar projects, which led to advocacy around uh, a more sustainable civic center, mm -hmm. um, and, and eventually kind of got me to run for city council. Right. Nice. Yeah, and even so, you all moved here in 2015. Mm -hmm. Even since then, Edgewater's changed pretty significantly. So when you all first mm -hmm. lived here, you lived on Eaton. If you would have looked east from your house down toward downtown, you would have seen an empty lot which is now the Edgewater Public Market. Yep. You mentioned when you bought your home, your home seemed like a lot of money then, mm -hmm. but when you look at the value of that house now, it's significantly more. Yeah. And even since 2015, this community's changed quite a bit. Like the yeah. space we're in right now was Edgewater Coffee Company. That year, 2015, it became Coda. And this space changed pretty significantly. Yeah. And so when you look at Edgewater now, what do you see as the, the biggest challenges facing our community and what are the biggest opportunities? Well, I think the, the biggest challenge is what you're alluding to. Um, and we've had 11 consecutive years of uh, tremendous housing appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, so even in, in 2015, when we were just three, four years into the start of the run up, I remember being concerned that, okay, well, am I buying at the top of the market? Yeah. Um, and then seven years later, realizing uh, nothing's really changed since then, we've seen kind of double digit percentage appreciation in, in housing. And, um, and that has, that's been a, a blessing and a curse mm -hmm. to, uh, to many communities. Uh, I mean, certainly our, our tax base has seen significant growth um, you know, the other big change in the last decade has been um, the retail marijuana tax base that, that has uh, really changed the financial situation of the city of Edgewater. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, we have a unique situation where we used to have plentiful affordable housing and now we have zero affordable right. housing. But on the other side of that, we also used to be uh as a city we had large financial issues mm -hmm. um but now we have uh, plentiful resources and and a lot of that uh you know credit goes to council and, and staff over the last decade um seeing opportunities like uh retail marijuana and and being um being really careful about investments mm -hmm. the city's made uh to kind of put us in a position where we have the opportunity uh, to, to make positive changes in our community. And I think you know, you're, you're seeing that um, it, it takes time. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think everybody learns pretty quickly in government that if you're gonna do something big, it's gonna be a multi-year effort. Mm -hmm. um, something that we're visibly seeing right now with the traffic calming mobility plan. Mm -hmm. um, those efforts started five years ago. Um, we published the plan in 2019, 
had a couple years delay because of the pandemic, wanting to know what the financial reality would be. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty scary a couple of years. We didn't know what would happen to our tax base. Yeah. Um, and then once we got out, those questions were kind of answered after a year or so. Said, okay, well now it's time to make these investments, got the money aside. Um, and now, you know, we're investing four or five million dollars just in the last year or two in these roundabouts and raised intersections and widening sidewalks. And so it's very exciting. I, th I think the, the big issue with affordability has been, um, it's, it's a challenging topic that's hard to figure out solutions in a city council workshop, a right. single city, city council workshop or, yeah. um, or a couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. And so we have, um, Taking a, we're taking a little bit different approach as a body this year, uh, and it's it's a good year. It just happens to be a, a, a very strategic year for the city, where uh, we're we have our kind of our typical retreats where we meet a couple times a year, um, but we also have a strategic planning session in the spring, and we have a, a big community uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, process, which we're going to do late summer and into the fall, mm -hmm. uh, where we can have com many conversations over the year, kind of bring in experts from around the region on affordable housing. Uh, we can talk to the community about, you know, what's, you know, what's acceptable, um, what is not acceptable, um, and try to move forward with having a, a plan in place. And mm -hmm. then uh, I think our council is very motivated to execute those plans. I think that's something that we've, we've really done a good job on um, with, with the mobility plan, mm -hmm. with the sustainability plan, um, on providing tools to actually uh, implement those recommendations, which gets back to the accountant and me wanting to see yep. those measurable results. Right. Definitely. Yeah, and it's interesting to watch even online the response to the mobility plan in the roundabouts mm -hmm. i think in a small town like ours anytime there's change there tends to be diverse reactions to that and a couple of years ago when there was homes built on ames and other places that were different than what people would like to see in edgewater mm -hmm. different styles of homes people reacted on any different end of the spectrum and with roundabouts the same thing now mm -hmm. people getting used to driving around a circle, which is not something we've had to do in Edgewater. Yep. And even yesterday when we were driving through the roundabout at 20th and Harlan, we actually followed your, your 20 RTD bus through mm -hmm. and it made, made it around the circle perfectly. And so it'll be interesting to see, especially as the weather warms up, uh, people on bikes, people walking, rolling mm -hmm. from Edgewater down to the library and the Civic Center, how it is for them. But so far, it seems like people are, are getting used to those new roundabouts, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes with the warmer weather. And even on our end of town, we're excited for the one uh, near Jefferson Junior Senior High to see how that gets installed and how much easier it is for students to walk from the neighborhood across the street to the high school. So it'll be interesting to see how the community responds to these different kind of changes around town. Yeah, and I think I think that responding to change is something that's really important for someone in my role, city council as well. Um, it's it's important to remember that not everybody's involved with all the decision making mm -hmm. and hearing all the different voices and understanding how we got to a conclusion. We did mm -hmm. so if if in roundabouts are are a good example and other traffic calming um, methods that we've either favored like roundabouts, uh, raised intersections, or we've uh, avoided like uh, speed bumps. Mm -hmm. So there, there's like, there's a lot of kind of input that we get from engineers, um, you know, fire and safety professionals and different perspective, perspectives from experts that a lot of folks in town don't hear and don't see, they just see the end result. Mm -hmm. um, and so being, uh, being open and available to kind of talk through that, explain the process, 
uh, I think helps people, but it takes time because you, mm -hmm. you can't get an audience of everyone. You can't get everyone's attention all the time. Yeah. So, so what advice on that point, what advice would you have for folks that want to learn more about what's going on around town or get involved more in what the city of Edgewater is doing? Um, well, I would, I would recommend that they, um, attend a city council meeting and start building relationships. Um, you know, this is a kind of how I got started, mm -hmm. I guess, going to the meetings, uh, meeting with the, the mayor at that time for coffee, mm -hmm. and just talking about different things and, and something that I do frequently with folks that want to get involved or have questions, um, or just shoot myself or counsel an email if there's, if there's a topic that you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, I will probably try to recommend you to serve on a specific community board um, that might line up with your interests. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a really good way to get involved um, if, that's, if that's your passion. And I think that's uh, how a lot of folks have gotten involved in the city and, and kind of gotten buy-in to this process mm -hmm. is by being invited in and... Um, it, to be part of the process and, and getting kind of some skin in the game. Right. Um, and like you mentioned too, how things work in the city, how projects get done, how kind of issues get resolved. Being on those boards really gives you an eye into how things get done. I think sometimes those of us that are on the outside expect things to get done right away within a month or two. But when you serve on one of those boards, you realize just how things work and how you have to get all the experts in the room to let you know how things work. You have to get the legal, the financial. And so it's a great way to really figure out the reality of how dreams get accomplished in town. Like even how Edgewater Public Market came to be, just seeing the whole process, being involved in those conversations, being on a board at one point, you get to kind of see how how that whole process works, which is kind of interesting. So to kind of switch gears a little bit from your role as mayor, uh, sure. more broad, what do you love about the Edgewater community? The Edgewater community, well, I, I love, um, I, I love that, that strong sense, you know, kind of getting back to every, everyone in the city is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody, all of your neighbors have something in common. And so we live in this little city together. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the ability to kind of walk around town and connect with folks, having that, that commonality is a great icebreaker mm -hmm. um, and uh, a great way to kind of to build community. Mm -hmm. I think, too, there's, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of great inherent advantages that we have in Edgewater. Um, I always talk about how, uh, how much I, I just like running around. I, I have a four mile loop from my house that I do a couple, a couple times a week and I, I rarely deviate from that. Um, I love to run, you know, run by uh, Walker Branch Park in the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a big part of our community now. Um, then of course, run to Sloan's Lake and see, um, ski, see the downtown skyline uh, for the first half of the run and then see the, the mountains mm -hmm. and, uh, and really just kind of appreciate the, uh, where we're at in terms of having this great access to both downtown and to the mountains mm -hmm. uh, and get, getting to, to see that, that beauty on a couple times a week and get out and get some fresh air. Um, and then on my way back home, uh, getting to run down 25th Avenue, uh, you know, seeing seeing shops like this, uh, and then walking, running through the neighborhood on, on my way back home. Yeah. yeah, that's a great, that loop is a great yeah. Edgewater loop to see kind of what what makes our little, little community unique. Because in a lot of ways, you're right, Edgewater is so small, there are real advantages to being less than a square mile. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to say if, if we can't do things in Edgewater, good luck getting them done at scale other places. So mm -hmm. even the roundabouts and mobility plan, there's mobility experts in Denver now that are jealous of what Edgewater's doing. 
And part of that is because council and city leaders have been forward thinking in planning for how to make the community safer for walkers, riders and rollers, and part of it's the benefit of a small community. We can get things done quicker because yeah. we're a small little community, and that's really what makes us great. And that, that loop you describe is a, a great way to see those different parts of town, and especially Walker Branch, because that's kind of a newer uh, view of our city that I don't think people even knew was part of Edgewater. Uh, driving on Harlan just south of 20th wasn't something people normally did, but that's always been part of the Edgewater community. And now with the Civic Center and the library there, mm -hmm. kind of gets a chance to spotlight it, which is cool. And so kind of trying to step back even farther, when your term as mayor is done, what do you hope you'll have accomplished at the end of your term? Well, I think, you know, I always go back to those measurable results. So we, and I talked about how this is a big planning year for the community with our strategic plan and our comprehensive plan. Um, so I think my hope is this year, if we can, we can listen and, um, and execute the plans that we have in place. And then um, after this year, really start implementing uh, the feedback that we got from that community process of the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. um, and addressing some of our, our big issues, yeah. um, like affordability. Um, you know, I, I think in, in terms of measurable, measurable results, we have zero affordable housing units. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started this office, I don't want that to be the same when I leave. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I think if we can get uh, a couple quick wins under our belt and then start working towards a, a good sustainable process of where we can figure out what's a good way to increase our inventory for both home ownership opportunities like I had in 2015, mm -hmm. Um, as well as giving some relief to uh, to renters, which is uh, which is pretty challenging with mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the state policies that are, have been enacted, limiting rent control, and um, one of the reasons why it, it hasn't been any, an easy solution. Mm -hmm. um, I think also um, in terms of sustainability, we we set some very measurable goals that that we can. Uh, we can calculate pretty easily. Um, the the ones that come to mind are you know, how much of our uh, electric generation comes from renewable resources. Uh, others is waste diversion targets, um, which we've made a big impact already with the uh, having 200 folks compost uh, doing engage with our uh, curbside composting program, um, and I think also. Um, I guess a little bit on the softer side um, is is figuring out how um, how to recover as a community from mm -hmm. this pandemic. Uh, the last couple of years have definitely been a toll on businesses and businesses and residents, and, and not just economically, but also from a mental health standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, when we were having our city council retreat last month, that was something that came came up quite frequently um, that, hey, you know, a lot of us have been isolated or going through a lot of uh, economic challenges the last couple of years. Um, that's, that's impacted people. It's, it's changed mm -hmm. people. Uh, what can we do um, as, as a community to, to help people kind of get out of that and uh, kind of embrace and have hope for the future, which yeah. um, things are looking good right now. Uh, pandemic wise and um, uh, you know a lot of people are kind of have embraced uh, public health recommendations to help us get out of here uh, this Omicron variant has been somewhat of a blessing just because it's gotten so many so many people have gotten exposure now to the virus either through vaccines or Omicron that that we're transitioning out of the pandemic into an endemic mm -hmm. uh, in, in managing COVID um, as, as kind of hopefully as a seasonal disease like the flu rather than something that's all, all year, yeah. all day, <laughs> right? Um, which, which I know a lot of people are looking forward to.
Yeah. Well, that's a great place to end this with is on hope, especially yeah. after the last couple of years. But mm -hmm. thank you, Mayor Beltron, for taking the time to do this and being our, our guinea pig yeah. for Brews on the Edge and answering these questions. And uh, we're really hopeful for what Edgewater continues to be and what Edgewater becomes over the next couple of years. So thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for the chai. You bet.